Hey everybody, it's Skip from the WSGF. I've spent the last few weeks testing the most popular solutions for in-home game streaming, which seems to be um, a topic that is top of mind and um, in the news a lot lately between AMD Link, uh, Steam Link Anywhere, and the new, new Google Stadia uh, streaming gaming service. So I wanted to look at what in-home game streaming looked like uh, today from all the big players. I'll give you the TLDR first and some time codes in the description if you want to look at the individual experiences from either the Xbox One, AMD Link, Nvidia Shield, or Steam Link. So we'll go worst to best. So by far the worst solution is the Xbox One and the wireless display adapter. A few weeks ago I did a video on in-home media streaming on 4K with a PC display. And I said that Microsoft and the Xbox team could have a killer value proposition if they could get game streaming from your PC to your Xbox. They had had the wireless adapter app and pulled it because it was a buggy mess. Well, they've re-released it and it's still a buggy mess. Uh, I could only get it to connect a couple of times. When I did, the app crashed on the uh, PC side, but the Xbox was still holding the image that had previously been streaming um, from the PC. Not anywhere ready for uh, public consumption. Next up in third place is AMD Link. So this is an iOS app that you can stream uh, to an iPhone or an iPad, but not an Apple TV. The iPhone experience is pretty good uh, with using the on-screen controls. When you go to use a hardware controller, you run into an issue where uh, the most popular and well-reviewed controller, the Nimbus by Steel Series, doesn't have both a menu and select button on it, so you can't access everything in your games. You can't use an Xbox One or PS4 controller because they're not MiFi certified by Apple. So if you want to do a little casual gaming and streaming on an iPhone, pretty good solution. Coming in in second place is the Nvidia Shield. It's a great experience. It's only for Nvidia GPU users, obviously. Uh, so if you're on Team Green, this is an option, but it's expensive. Um, you can get it without the bundled controller if you already if you have an extra Xbox One or PS4 controller lying around or one that you don't mind repairing. It's a great solution uh, with a very uh, smooth experience, but you're paying for that experience. Surprisingly, honestly, in first place is the Steam Link. The hardware has been out for a couple of years. I took a pre-launch review of it November two years ago, and I had labeled that video the good, the bad, and the disappointing. At the time, I had uh, problems with the Steam Link image blanking out on the TV, and then there were issues with it not recognizing that I was using a controller on the Steam Link, um, not good wireless controller support or wireless mouse and keyboard support. All of that has been fixed. Um, it natively detects a controller and you can simply pair an Xbox um, or PS4 controller to it. And I'm still not a fan of the uh, Steam controller, whatever that's called. So they've added in a functionality where you can stream your entire desktop and not just Steam out of big picture mode. And so with that, you can you know use it like a secondary PC display. You can stream your desktop, you can stream your Netflix or something if you wanted to um, and sort of get around the fact that it doesn't have any native apps built in. But you can also stream other game platforms. Um, I had good success streaming from GOG, The Witcher 3 specifically. Had trouble with Fortnite because it's not recognizing that a controller was connected and then the uh, routine hassle of Fortnite needing to be patched and updated. So it, it, it's kind of a kludgy connection there. Valve doesn't sell the Steam Link anymore, but you can pick one up on eBay for about 30 bucks. So get your hands on one of these, drop it in a second room, your living room, your bedroom, where you might want to do some in-home streaming, grab an Xbox One controller or a wireless mouse and keyboard, and it's a really good solution for a cheap price. So if you want to look at more detailed um, analysis of each of these solutions, check the time codes in this, the description. Please do like and share the video, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that kind of stuff. 
trying to do more videos and grow the channel. If you have any comments, leave them below. Um, I will try to answer those. And I do realize when I did the Steam Link review that I kept saying, uh, calling the company Steam and not Valve. So you don't need to comment on that. So here we're gonna take a look at the Steam Link. This is the, the hardware box um, that's been out for a couple of years. I looked at it actually prior to the public launch, wasn't that impressed. I'm looking at it again and I will say that Steam has made improvements in leaps and bounds in these last couple of years. On the left hand side we've got uh, the gaming PC on the right hand side this is what the Steam Link looks like um, when you boot it up after you have uh, configured it you can see the Ryzen PC there that's uh, ready to stream with first I'm going to go into settings and streaming and one thing I want to point out is if you go into the advanced options you'll see here at the top where it says start streaming desktop enabled if you turn this on you can stream not only just your games out of your Steam library from big picture mode, but you can stream anything from the desktop. You could just stream your desktop, you could browse, Netflix, or you can stream games from other platforms like GOG or Epic Game Store. You can do that pretty easily if you create a shortcut within Steam uh, to those executables. But really, while the Steam Link is um, marketed as just streaming uh, games over Steam, it's now a multi-purpose streaming box. Um, and while they don't sell it anymore, you can find it pretty cheap on eBay for about 30 bucks or so. So you'll see now that it started, it's given us this warning about using a controller and going into big picture mode. And I'm actually gonna have to use the mouse that's directly connected to make this go away and say, don't show me this again. But once you get connected, then the question is, how do I go from the desktop to big picture? Well, if you just press the Xbox button on your controller, you'll go straight to big picture. So you turn on the link, start streaming your desktop, hit the button and you're there. So if we go to library, um, I'll pull up Ori in the Blind Forest. So if I start the game, you can see that it's streaming. There's essentially no lag. So the game is really responsive. Um, especially in something like a platforming here where you need to make uh, precise movements with uh, an accurate timing. All of the issues that I had previously with Steam, with the set-top box blanking out on me, controller support not being pre-configured, all of those issues are gone. And um, it's sort of a shame that Steam has let the hardware lapse and die because it's now, um, in my opinion, the premier option here for in-home streaming. When I looked at the Steam Link the first time years ago, um, I had an issue with the Steam controller and trying to use the little touch pads as a trackpad. I still don't like the Steam controller. I still don't um, find that to be a precise and intuitive way to uh, control games. I haven't practiced with it a lot, to be honest. But with the Steam Link device now, you can connect a wireless mouse and keyboard. So something like the Razer Turret, you can see I just have the little adapter plugged in there. Something like Torchlight is now easy to play with mouse and keyboard. Uh, Street Fighter 4 Ultra, which didn't have a controller profile last time, now works out of the box. So in my library, The Witcher 3 is in GOG, not Steam. So if I select that, you'll see it doesn't give me all the details it would for a native Steam game. Um, I've created this shortcut previously on the PC that's easier to do than trying to do it from uh, the Steam big picture. It will identify uh, that you have a controller and everything works seamlessly. It simply works out of the box. It works great. On the beautiful preset, it, it looks great. It controls, there's no lag, no stuttering. Uh, beyond what you might get randomly uh, natively in the game on the the desktop client itself. So I have on the left my gaming PC running at 1440p. On the right I have an Nvidia Shield TV only running at 1080p on both uh, halves of this Dell double wide monitor. The Shield TV does not offer a 1440p so it's either 4k or uh, 1080p only. You'll go into Nvidia game section of the shield 
to set up your device, you go into game stream PCs. You can see my Ryzen machine is connected. Add PC, it'll give you a pin to use that you confirm on your uh, desktop within the NVIDIA GeForce Experience and they will see each other and you'll be ready to go. Uh, you can test your network connection. For some reason, after the last update, that's not working for me, but it did test my connection with essentially zero latency and zero lag, like one millisecond or zero milliseconds and a bandwidth of greater than 30 megabits per second so I could get uh, full quality streaming. So it, it, if I look at the game stream games, you can tell it's pulling that list out of the GeForce experience on the left. Most of the things here are from Steam, although Fortnite is going to be from the Epic launcher and Witcher 3 is going to be from the GOG launcher. And then you can launch Steam itself in big picture mode. So we'll start with the Witcher 3. You'll see here that it's coming from GOG and that it will stream at HD 1080p 60 frames per second. Now as it starts to load, it's reset the, um, the resolution on my gaming PC. And at this point you can see that it's simply streaming the entire desktop. So it's not somehow launching a process in the background and then streaming across. So if you have the idea to let somebody game off of your primary machine and stream while you're doing something else, that's not going to work. So as I was fighting there, I was concentrating and looking at the monitor on the right. Um, while that was a pretty clumsy fight, I didn't detect any lag between my input and what showed up on screen. So in my testing, I also took a look at streaming here on the Shield handheld. Works much the same, although it's over a, a Wi-Fi connection. You can see it's pulling back up the things that I've most recently played here. If I go to my... Library will pull the same thing here. This streams at 720p. So as it starts streaming from my desktop, you'll notice it gets to a big blocky and blurry uh, 1080p, or I'm sorry, 720p there. So the stream quality is, is not bad. Uh, it's 720p, even though it's telling me I have higher latency and lag, it's, it's not too bad. I mean, obviously you wouldn't do anything competitive on here. Um, streaming laying down, like holding it above you, works pretty well. It's got these finger rests here so that it, it, it's balanced. It is heavy, but it balances well. Uh, one of the, the difficulties, I will say, one of the bigger issues is that this is old enough that it's not adhering to the Xbox standard, uh, Xbox One controller standard for mapping. And so I was streaming uh, Hyper Light Drifter and I couldn't hit all the menus. I couldn't see the map in my character screen because I didn't have the right select um, and start. So we'll take a quick look at AMD Link. It's an iOS application that you can use on iPhone and iPad, but not Apple TV. Um, I've got it running here on uh, the latest generation of iPad and I have the HDMI out through lightning connector you can see here on the right hand side of the TV. So it is already connected to my Ryzen PC there. Uses either a pin code or you scan a QR code with your iOS device to set up the connection after you download the app. Once you've got it downloaded, it will scan your library. It essentially pulls your Steam library plus Fortnite. That's all I've been able to sort out here. I don't see it pulling anything else. So you'll notice here on the right, I'm using the um, digital AV out uh, adapter with the iPad. The iPad has a four by three resolution. So as it's streaming to this um, second half of my Dell super wide, it's got really big black bars around it. Um, 
So if I go play the game here, or go to the options, you can see it's running 16 by 9, uh, 1080p. But because it's essentially duplicating that native resolution of the iPad, we get these really ugly black bars all the way around. Um, I did try it with the iPhone. The iPhone has more of a native 16 by 9, but not quite. So it does fill more of the screen, but it's uh, not quite perfect. But since I shoot video on the iPhone, I couldn't uh, demo on the iPhone. You can have it show your streaming metrics. Right now it's pulling about 17, 18 megs of bandwidth. Um, as it's streaming, now it's up to 22. So you can see that um, up here in the top, it's also showing you percent dropped frames and your latency. Um, I'm running about 45 milliseconds of latency here. So if you don't have a MiFi Bluetooth controller, an Xbox One controller won't work, then you can do on-screen controls. That setting is available right here. A controller profile two is your hardware controller. Controller profile one is your uh, software controller on screen. It was okay on the iPhone, um, but on the iPad, it was a bit uncomfortable having to hold the iPad at the very bottom to reach here, and it wasn't balanced very well. If you're gonna play with an iPad, I would suggest getting the controller. The problem is, is like I had with the uh, Shield Portable, doesn't have the start and menu buttons. So you can't get to all the menus here. So it's kind of lacking unless you can find the right controller and there's not a lot of MFI compatible controllers available. I think this could be a winner um, if they ever came out with an Apple TV version because you're most likely to have a hardwired connection there uh, rather than just Wi-Fi. And uh, the Apple TV does have a native uh, 16 by 9 uh, output and you wouldn't end up with all these black bars and this type of thing. So all in all, a pretty good first pass at an app by AMD. Um, I think there's certain, certainly room for improvement. Uh, please do like and share the video, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that kind of stuff. I'm trying to do more videos and grow the channel.